If you're looking to preserve your classic car, you don't want that green kryptonite car rust. Hey, I love Superman, man. That was my dude growing up. I love Superman. You know I like the Black Panther. I, but one thing about Superman that I love, he was faster than a speeding bullet. He was more powerful than a locomotive. He could leap tall Bill. I love that, man. I can still see those movies, that train going down, Superman running. Looked like human, just like you and I, but he was different. You know, Superman was, man, that's that dude, Superman. But there's one thing that could hurt the Man of Steel, and that was Green Kryptonite. And green Kryptonite would weaken his muscles and if he was left in green kryptonite for a sustained period of time, what we'd find, it could be deadly. Same thing here with Man of Steel here, metaphorically speaking. This 59 Fairlane behind me is also made of steel, but there's some kryptonite that can harm this. It's really uh, an iron oxide. It's when iron and oxygen kind of combine and they meet together. There are 16 types of of iron oxide and iron hydroxides. There's 16. Some of them are highly beneficial. There's some great things. If you're like my wife and you're into earth tones, you know, the button on this shirt, you're into those, those kind of natural colors, those natural hues, and it makes a pigmentation that is insoluble. You find it in paints and even concrete coloration. Just a powerful uh, thing and a powerful benefit. So we don't want to do away with all of the iron oxide, but within that 16, there's one of them called rust. And that rust oxide that turns and kind of rust makes some of those pigments I'm talking about. It is green kryptonite to a classic car. And if you're looking to preserve your classic car, you don't want that green kryptonite called rust. Because what rust does when it is combined with a catalyst, and the catalyst is moisture, the catalyst is water. So all you need is oxygen and iron and a little bit of water. Man, you've got a mess on your hand if you have a classic car. Now there's a couple of myths about rust that I want to go to. One of them is that rust is contagious. It's not like a biological infection that you and I have in our human body, and <clears throat> especially with this pandemic going on, then it's contagious to other individuals. So this car, if rust is contained in one area, it's just that area. It's not that the rust itself just kind of runs and it spreads like a contagious disease to every other part of the car. That's not what happened. It doesn't, the trunk doesn't cough on the hood <laughs> and the hood coughs on the lower quarter. <laughs> That's not what happened. So, so that we're gonna do away with that myth. The other thing is, the other myth is surface rust. And individuals think that surface rust is a bad thing, listen. If I take a car all the way down and put it in bare metal, remember, oxygen and iron, that makes an iron oxide, and all you need is a little moisture and it starts to catalyst for rust. Now, surface rust, a lot of people are so afraid of it, but if I strip a car down and I leave it in the ambient air, what ends up happening is there's moisture in the air. And so you'll see after a day or so, some small surface rust forming. It's no big deal, it's not a harm at all. Now, some individuals will state and claim, and in certain instances, it forms a pervasive structure, if you will, a barrier of protection. I won't get too deep into that, but I want to say that surface rust, myth number two, is no big deal. It forms. There's no way you can have a car in raw metal and some sense of surface rust doesn't, doesn't happen. So that, that in and of itself is not a problem. All right, so now how do I prevent this? How do I prevent rust? from taking place. You have to separate the iron from the environment. That's it. You have to separate the iron from the natural environment. Well, how do I separate the iron from the natural environment? That's what paint does. That's what lacquer does. That's what sealer does. That, it is designed to protect the actual metal of the car away from the element. So when we're painting a car and we use clear, I use DCU 2021. I use that clear because it's the best clear on the market, all things being equal for mainstream uh, type restoration, if you will. But it's about $600 a, a kit for clear. It's a really, really good clear. What does the clear do? The clear protects the paint 
from the UV rays in, in the sun. Because what you don't want, you don't want the sun breaking down that barrier of protection because if the sun breaks down that barrier of protection, then what's gonna separate you from the metal itself? There's nothing to separate you from the metal. So you really want good, clear on the car. And that brings me to where I am today. Why am I here? Why I am I at this particular point? Because this is rust on a car that has begun, gone beyond a surface state and it has gone to a corrosive state. So the rust in this vehicle is, has now become a structural problem. And that's the danger of rust. It's not surface rust. It's not a little bit of surface rust that creates the problem. Now, one more little tidbit of information. If you have surface rust, go ahead and take care of it. Well, what does surface rust look like? Listen, if you have a paint job and you see some bubbles forming, beneath those bubbles are normally rust particles. Beneath those bubbles, that some kind of that that paint within there has reached and touched with uh, water and oxygen and what you have there you have that corrosive element taking place but it's probably at a surface nature could be all the way through but normally it's at a surface surface point and I had a car come in one day and um, I told I shared that with the client uh, the potential client they said no that's not rust so then we shaved it off and it began to dust. And we, with our trained eye, we saw, yeah, that was rust, it was surface rust. And, and the individual said, see, that's bare metal. I told you it wasn't rust. <laughs> yeah, well, it was rust. <laughs> it was just surface rust. And if untreated, whatever is uh, caused that can also continue to cause that. And it just kind of eat away and get to a point where it's at this car. Now, what happened to this car? I don't know, man. I don't know. The story says this car sat out about seven years at another shop. It's set out in a pasture somewhere. Uh, the client thought the car was being worked on. I, I don't want to get into all of that. But how did this happen? I'll tell you one thing. That structural, uh, loss of structural integrity. So I don't know what the car was like when it went to the shop. I don't know what happened. I do know this car was worked on before because I see the Bondo all on it. So at some point in his life, someone worked on it. Someone did some work on it. And what happens is if they didn't take care of the rust at that point, if they didn't uh, treat the car at that point correctly, what we see is that rust uh, being exposed to those elements I'm talking about, the oxidation process just sort of continues and, and you don't want that problem. But now let's say this car set in a pool of water. See, now we got an extreme concentration. You know, I have individuals that sometimes they'll say, hey, I'm gonna die anyway. It doesn't matter if I do this that's bad for my health, if I do this bad for my health, I'm gonna die anyway. I say that's true, but you didn't jump in front of a, a moving truck, did you? Because if you jump in front of a moving vehicle, it's pretty, you're gonna shorten your life pretty fast. <laughs> and so it's the same thing here when you're talking about rust on a car. Now, this car set in water, and it's set in a waterous environment. Can you imagine this being a boat, and this car is in the boat? going through the water. If you don't have a protective barrier for marine life, there's no way the ship is gonna make it. Well, it's the same thing here. There has to be a protective barrier around your vehicle. Because if there is no protective barrier, what's gonna happen? The oxidation process is gonna happen and you're gonna have earth tone, <laughs> iron oxide on your car. And it's kinda like what? It's kind of like that green kryptonite and the man is still gonna go down and you don't want that. So what do you do if you find your vehicle is in a situation where kryptonite is taking over? What you do is what Superman did. You go and call a couple of your friends. See, he called Lois Lane and her fiance and what they did, they went and got old Superman, man. They went and pulled him out of that situation, got him away from that green kryptonite put him on a new suit. And that's what happens when we strip this car down, we get it all back down to the butt naked truth is what I call it. Then normally I put a rust inhibitor on there. After I put that rust inhibitor on there, I'm gonna put some PPG epoxy prime on there. And then I'm gonna build up from that. I'm gonna do my body work, my 2K. And before I paint the car, I'm gonna use a sealer. Cause I wanna seal everything between my paint and my metal. I want to seal everything, make a protective barrier there, 
Then I'm coming back with my bass, coming back with my glyph. Hey, that's how I do it. 1959, something happened, y'all. There's a whole lot of iron oxide going on. It's a whole lot of oxidation going on. Who did it? Why they did it? How it happened? I don't know, but I believe there was a heavy concentration of water. This would not have happened with an occasional rain. So it's not even just leaving a car outside. It's leaving a car in an environment where that rust can just eat it. And what I'm seeing here, I do see a lot of it at the bottom, but I see a lot of it at the top. And I, so I don't know exactly what happened. I don't think it was submerged because see how that skyline look, you'll see it in a moment. That skyline uh, uh, emblem there, look, it doesn't look corroded. So I don't think the whole car was submerged. And when I look at the pigmentation of the color, it doesn't look like the whole car was submerged, but something happened. High concentration of water, I don't know what the condition the car was like when it got there. Hey, this is what we call restoration rescues, man. Y'all, 911 City Classic Car, yeah.